Donald Trump is a phony. His promises are as worthless as a degree from Trump University. Political parties are changing rapidly. If he fought really hard against President Obama, like he does against me, he would have won the election. In modern U.S. history, the American people have pretty much had two parties to choose from, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. One of these two parties has won every single U.S. presidential election since 1852 and controlled Congress since 1856. There have been other parties that have been somewhat successful in getting their name recognized, including the Libertarian Party and the Green Party in modern politics, but even today the main two parties hold nearly every seat in federal, state, and local government. The two parties have always been at odds with each other, as in there's not a whole lot of common ground between the two, but today there's even less common ground within the parties. The Republican Party has split into two factions, and so has the Democratic Party. And similar things are happening in Europe as well. What is going on with political parties in the world today? And why? Starting in America, let's look at the split of the Republican Party. It happened very quickly in 2015 when one man announced something incredible. I am officially running for President of the United States, and we are going to make our country great again. Donald Trump changed the Republican Party when he decided to run for President of the United States. Trump was a polarizing figure within the Republican Party during the 2016 election, and frankly still is now. There were not many people that were indifferent about him. Some didn't take him seriously, but they either loved him or they hated him. He had some pretty radical positions. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. And also had some ideologies that are not really conservative. The values in New York City are socially liberal or pro-abortion or pro-gay marriage. Not a lot of conservatives come out of Manhattan. The more he's exposed, the more people might know that He's not really a conservative. Trump took a pretty strong lead in the polls though, and during the Republican primary, many politicians within the GOP either hitched their wagon to Trump or completely denounced him. If Donald Trump's plans were ever implemented, the country would sink into prolonged recession. Even after Donald Trump won the Republican primary, and even after he became president, the division remained within the party, and I've aptly named the factions the New Republicans and the Old Republicans. To put it simply, the party is divided between those who support President Trump and those who don't entirely support him. Now it's not entirely black and white as there are a lot of people who would vote for Trump over a Democrat, but he's not close to their first choice for a president. The new Republicans support Trump, they voted for Trump and they're happy about it. The president has a very clear base that he appeals to at his rallies and on Twitter. He's not without a support in Congress either, with people like Lindsey Graham, Ted Cruz, Mitch McConnell and Dan Crenshaw often coming to his aid. But as I said before, President Trump has a lot of opposition within the Republican Party from the old Republicans faction. Some are known as Never Trumpers. Mitt Romney is a big example of a Republican who has not supported the president. Uh, his uh, attack on the media, I wrote an entire piece about that. Uh, so I've, I've laid out time and again places where I disagree with the president. The late Senator John McCain was another Republican who did not bow to Trump as others in the party had. McCain was the sole vote that kept President Trump's health care plan from passing the Senate. He knew that this was his one last chance to really take a stand, capture the nation's imagination in the process, but also remind his party that they had to do things differently. McCain, with a thumbs down gesture, shocked the chamber. No. <gasps> Trump was not invited to McCain's state funeral. There's a huge fracture in the party between yeah. Trump supporters and non-Trump supporters. Since the beginning of Trump's campaign, they, there have been extremely personal attacks on my family, on my father, mm -hmm. that everybody knows about. Others left politics or even left the party after Trump's victory. But aren't you a Republican? Um, I am a Republican, but I'm not going to be a Republican anymore. I've, I've, I've got to become an independent. And the old Republicans are traditional conservatives that have occupied the party for decades. Thinking about the names that I mentioned, 
John McCain and Mitt Romney were the Republican nominees for president in 2008 and 2012 respectively, and neither of them have been particularly supportive of President Trump, and frankly neither is George Bush. Bigotry seems emboldened. Our politics seems more vulnerable to conspiracy theories and outright fabrication. Maybe the party's not splitting per se, but rather changing, and McCain, Romney, and Bush are just the old dogs left behind. Former Senators Bob Corker and Jeff Flake spoke about the changing Republican Party. No, no, no. Gosh, we, we might poke the bear. It's a language I've been hearing in the hallways. We, we might poke the bear. The president might get upset with us as United States Senators if we vote on the Corker Amendment. So we're going to do everything we can to block it. I can't believe it. It is clear at this moment that a traditional conservative who believes in limited government and free markets, who is devoted to free trade, who is pro-immigration, has a narrower and narrower path to nomination in the Republican Party. You can't, as a Republican these days, uh, stand in, in, you know, in opposition to some of the president's policies or, or not condone his behavior and expect to win a Republican primary. This isn't the first time that the GOP is split. Going back to 2008, Meet Sarah Palin, John McCain's running mate, a populist Washington outsider with a message to do away with the establishment. Sound familiar? I'm not going to Washington to seek their good opinion. I'm going to Washington to serve the people of this great country. Palin, along with Ron Paul's failed campaign, unknowingly began the early stages of the Tea Party movement, a movement within the Republican Party towards libertarianism and populism. The Tea Party quickly gained a coalition in the House of Representatives in the Freedom Caucus with Congressman Mick Mulvaney, Jim Jordan, Justin Amash, and others. Though the movement had largely died out after the 2012 election, the Freedom Caucus still holds power. They were instrumental in the resignation of Speaker of the House John Boehner in 2015 and played a big part in the difficulty that House Republicans had in passing President Trump's health care bill in 2017. So that was the split of the Republican Party, but the Democratic Party is just as divided. It's also the Democrat brand has shifted because remember, That's it was Ted too. Kennedy, Joe Biden, John Kerry, Al Gore, they all voted for the Reagan tax cuts. And just like the split of the Republicans, the split of the Democrats began largely in the 2016 presidential election primaries. The clear front runner in the 2016 Democratic primary was Hillary Clinton, a typical Washington Democratic politician the first lady to a Democratic president, a Democratic senator, and Obama's secretary of state. She won the primary with about 55% of the vote. Senator Bernie Sanders from Vermont got 43% of the vote, a somewhat close second. Sanders did not identify as a Democrat. He was an independent. You're talking about reforming, reviving, transforming the Democratic Party. Do you consider yourself a Democrat? No, I'm an independent and I think if the Democratic Party is going to succeed, and I want to see it succeed, it's going to have to open its doors to independence. The Democratic Party was not far left enough for Bernie Sanders. Sanders identified himself as a Democratic Socialist and steered the party further left towards socialism. We have a lot to learn from Democratic Socialist governments that have existed in countries like Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Norway. Universal health care was a big part of his campaign and he got a lot of the vote. Fight for a progressive agenda, which among other things includes a Medicare for all single payer program. When Hillary Clinton won the Democratic nomination, many Sanders supporters voted for Donald Trump over a Democrat. The party got split between the liberal or corporate Democrats and the progressive or socialist Democrats. The liberal Democrats are the classic Democratic Washington politicians. Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, Nancy Pelosi, Joe Biden. The progressive Democrats are the new farther left Democrats. Bernie Sanders, Kamala Harris, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Beto O'Rourke, Elizabeth Warren. Look at the Democratic field for 2020. They're all progressives, Bernie Sanders types. They all want very big government. Raise your hand if, gover if your government plan would provide coverage for undocumented immigrants. Okay. But that's not to say that progressives have completely taken over the Democratic Party. There are still many liberal Democrats in America. They're more moderate. The reparations that Kamala Harris proposes and Andrew Yang's freedom dividend don't necessarily appeal to them. Their option for 2020? Vice President Joe Biden. 
He's the odd man out in the 2020 Democratic primary, and he does have a shot at winning. He's the last person in the 2020 Democratic field that has a chance that appeals to liberal Democrats. The vast majority of Democrats are where I am on the issues. It's center left. That's where I am. Where it's not is way left. If Biden does not get the nomination, will moderate Democrats vote for a progressive? Or will they vote for Donald Trump? Or will a repeat of 2016 happen? If Biden gets the nomination, will progressives vote for Trump? That's another video. In essence, the political parties in America have changed and factionalized dramatically in the last few years, and it's not showing any signs of slowing down. But something similar is happening in Europe as well. But we have divergent views on a specific issue, which is causing us, as a party, great difficulty. You'll see more about that in the next video. That's all I have for this video though, and I thank you for watching, and I'm very proud to say that I have three videos over 1 million views. I'll see you next time.